Waves of sinister laughter rippled through Pixis's command deck as the Supreme Commander watched Earth's feeble orbital defenses crumble under the Ventaxian assault. Five hundred warships, each one a floating fortress bristling with weapons, had encircled the blue-green planet like a pack of hungry predators. Earth was doomed, or so the arrogant alien invaders believed. Hidden deep underground in a secret research facility, Dr. Andrew Bennett and his team feverishly prepped their ultimate weapon. If Project Leap worked as designed, the impossible would become humanity's salvation. Bennett checked the final calculations one last time. Everything was in place. It was now or never. At the emergency summit, world leaders watched with bated breath as Dr. Bennett explained his audacious plan. Teleport elite soldiers aboard the Ventaxian warships. Seize control from within. Turn the alien armada against itself. Some called it a suicide mission. Others saw it as Earth's last hope. With the Ventaxians poised to unleash planet-wide destruction, the decision was unanimous. Project Leap would be activated. The very fate of humanity hung in the balance. Across the globe, battle-hardened warriors converged under a cloak of secrecy. Maps and schematics of Ventaxian vessel layouts were burned into memory. Weapons were primed, equipment triple-checked. They had mere hours to master the teleportation process and prepare for the fight of their lives. As the thunder of Ventaxian bombardment shook the heavens and the first cities burned, Dr. Bennett's voice crackled over the comm. Commencing teleportation in three, two, one. In an instant, dozens of strike teams vanished from Earth and materialized in the cold, sterile innards of the alien fleet. The borders opened fire without hesitation, spraying armor-piercing rounds and plasma bolts at the stunned Ventaxians. Savage room-to-room -room fighting exploded on multiple decks as the humans surged forward, sowing chaos and destruction in their wake. The acrid stench of smoke and burned circuitry filled the air as Captain Jake Sullivan led his team through the labyrinthine corridors of the Ventaxian dreadnought. Alarms blared and emergency lights flashed, painting the walls a hellish red. Sullivan's heart pounded in his chest as he rounded a corner, rifle at the ready. A pair of hulking alien warriors loomed ahead, their armor glinting in the flickering light. Contact front, Sullivan barked, opening fire. Armor-piercing rounds tore into the Ventaxians, dropping them in sprays of viscous green blood. Sullivan's team surged forward, leapfrogging from cover to cover as they pushed deeper into the ship. They had to reach the bridge and seize control before the Ventaxians could rally. Every second counted. In the cold void of space, the battle raged with relentless fury. Human and Ventaxian ships dueled at knife-fight range, their hulls blazing with the fire of a thousand suns. Fighters danced and swirled, locked in mortal combat. The ESS Indomitable shuddered as enemy fire slammed into her shields. But Admiral Taggart held fast. Concentrate fire on the enemy flagship, Taggart ordered, his voice booming over the bridge. We have to take out their command and control. A storm of missiles and energy beams converged on the Ventaxian flagship, battering its defenses. Explosions blossomed along its armored hull as the human fleet pressed the attack. Deep within the Ventaxian ships, Arya Sato and her team of hackers waged a silent war in the realm of code and data. Their fingers flew over holographic keyboards as they breached firewalls and injected viruses into the alien systems. I'm in, Sato said, her voice tight with concentration. Shutting down their weapons now. On the bridge of a crippled Ventaxian carrier, Sergeant Rico Vega and his Marines fought like demons. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air as they clashed with the ship's defenders in brutal close-quarters combat. Vega ducked under a swiping alien claw and drove his combat knife into the warrior's neck, dropping it with a gurgle. Push forward! Vega roared, rallying his men. We've got these bastards on the ropes. But even as the tide turned in humanity's favor, a new threat loomed. Supreme Commander Pixis, his eyes blazing with anger, strode onto the bridge of his flagship. Activate the Doomsday Cannon, he snarled. We will scour these human vermin from the stars. Deep within the bowels of the Ventaxian flagship, a massive energy cannon thrummed to life. Its barrel glowed with an ominous radiance as it swiveled to target the human fleet. 
Admiral Taggart's blood ran cold as he realized the danger. All ships, converge on that cannon, he shouted into the comm. We have to take it out before... A blinding flash seared Taggart's retinas as the doomsday cannon fired, a lance of pure destruction stabbing through the void. Time seemed to slow to a crawl as the deadly energy beam hurtled towards the human fleet, poised to erase them from existence. The doomsday cannon's beam sliced through space, missing the ESS Indomitable by mere meters. Admiral Taggart blinked away the afterimage seared into his retinas, his heart pounding. All ships converge on that cannon, he barked into the comm. We need to take it out now. Taggart turned to his XO. Prep the teleportation devices. We're boarding that flagship. Within minutes, Taggart and a hand-picked team of Marines materialized in the bowels of the Ventaxian vessel. Alarms blared as they emerged from swirling blue energy, weapons at the ready. Move out, Taggart ordered, leading the charge down a corridor bathed in pulsing red emergency lights. They encountered resistance almost immediately. A squad of Ventaxian warriors rounded the corner, plasma rifles raised. Taggart's team dove for cover as energy bolts sizzled past. Suppressing fire, Taggart shouted, unleashing a burst from his rifle. The air filled with the staccato of gunfire and the acrid smell of ozone. As they fought their way deeper into the ship, Taggart's calm crackled to life. Dr. Bennett's voice came through, tense but clear. Admiral, we've analyzed the cannon's schematics. There's a critical power junction in the core. Disable it, and the whole system should fail. Taggart acknowledged, then split his force. Alpha team, create a diversion. Draw them away from the core. Bravo, you're with me. The ship shuddered as human vessels outside pounded its shields. Taggart led Bravo team through a maze of corridors, dispatching Ventaxian resistance with brutal efficiency. They reached a vast chamber filled with humming machinery, arcs of energy dancing between colossal pillars. This is it, Taggart said, surveying the power core. Plant the charges. We'll... A thunderous roar interrupted him. A massive figure stepped from the shadows, easily eight feet tall, with rippling muscles and cybernetic enhancements gleaming beneath scaly skin. I am Praetor Zarkos, the Ventaxian behemoth growled. You will go no further, human. Zarkos moved with preternatural speed, closing the distance in a heartbeat. Taggart barely managed to dodge the alien's first swing, feeling the air displacement as the massive fist passed inches from his face. Around them, Bravo team engaged Zarkos's elite guard in a desperate firefight. Plasma bolts and bullets crisscrossed the chamber, punctuated by screams and the thud of falling bodies. Taggart rolled away from another crushing blow, his mind racing. He couldn't match the alien's strength or speed, but maybe... He fainted left, then ducked right, maneuvering Zarkos towards a sparking conduit. The Praetor lunged forward and Taggart seized his chance. He sidestepped, letting momentum carry Zarkos into the live electrical feed. The alien's roar of pain shook the chamber. Cybernetic implants sizzled and popped as electricity coursed through them. Taggart pressed his advantage, delivering a flurry of strikes to vulnerable points. Finally, with a gurgling cry, Zarkos collapsed. Taggart stood over his fallen foe, chest heaving. Charge is set, sir, a Marine called out. Taggart nodded. Fall back to the extraction point. Move! They fought their way back through the ship, the sounds of battle growing more intense. Just as they reached the teleportation coordinates, the deck lurched violently beneath their feet. What was that? Taggart demanded. A Marine monitoring ship-to-ship -ship communications paled. Sir? The Ventaxian Supreme Commander, he's overriding safeties on the cannon. He's going to fire, even if it destroys the ship. Taggart's blood ran cold. Detonate the charges, now! The Marine hit the detonator. A series of thunderous explosions rocked the flagship, and klaxons began to wail. Taggart could feel the deck plates heating beneath his boots as power surges ripped through the vessel. Teleport us out of here, he ordered. As swirling energy enveloped them, Taggart caught a glimpse through a viewport. The Ventaxian flagship was coming apart at the seams, massive hull plates tearing away as internal explosions consumed it from within. The Doomsday Cannon, still glowing with pent-up energy, 
shattered into a million gleaming shards. Taggart materialized on the bridge of the Indomitable just in time to see the Ventaxian flagship erupt in a cataclysmic fireball. The bridge crew erupted in cheers, but Taggart knew the fight was just the beginning. All ships, press the attack, he commanded. Don't let them regroup. As the human fleet surged forward, Taggart allowed himself a grim smile. They'd struck a decisive blow, but the Ventaxians still had hundreds of ships in orbit. The battle for Earth had only just begun. The Ventaxian flagship's destruction sent shockwaves through the alien armada. Admiral Taggart watched from the bridge of the Indomitable as enemy ships scattered like startled insects, their formation crumbling. They're running, his XO reported, studying the tactical display. Multiple warp signatures detected. Taggart's eyes narrowed. Not on my watch. All ships, pursuit protocol Alpha, don't let them regroup. The human fleet surged forward, engines flaring as they gave chase. Long-range sensors probed the void, tracking tachyon trails left by the fleeing Ventaxians. Aboard the ESS Relentless, Captain Sarah Chen's pursuit squadron cornered a group of alien destroyers attempting to form a defensive screen. Weapons free, Chen ordered. Take them out. Space lit up with energy beams and missile contrails. Ventaxian fighters swarmed from launch bays, only to be met by waves of human interceptors. The dogfight raged across three dimensions, punctuated by fireballs as ships on both sides succumbed to withering fire. Chen gritted her teeth as the Relentless shuddered under a barrage from the alien flagship. Concentrate fire on their engines, she commanded. Cripple them! The human vessels pounded the Ventaxian ship mercilessly. Its shields flickered and died, armor plating peeling away under the assault. With a final devastating salvo, the Relentless severed the alien vessel's spinal section. It drifted, dead in space. Prep boarding teams, Chen said grimly. Let's clean house. On the crippled Ventaxian destroyer, Zarkail, Sergeant Rico Vega and his Marines, found themselves pinned down by precise alien fire. Plasma bolts sizzled overhead as they huddled behind a makeshift barricade. Those bastards have us zeroed, Corporal Rodriguez growled. We push out there. We're toast. Vega's mind raced. He keyed his comm. Control, this is Vega. Request immediate teleport to coordinates. Moments later, Vega's squad materialized behind the Ventaxian position. The alien snipers focused on the barricade, never saw them coming. Frag out, Vega roared, hurling a grenade. The explosion rocked the corridor and his team surged forward. In the ensuing close quarters battle, Vega's combat knife flashed as he grappled with a towering Ventaxian warrior. The alien's strength was immense, but Vega was quicker. He slipped inside the creature's guard and drove the blade up under its armored chin. Green blood sprayed as the Ventaxian collapsed. Clear, Rodriguez called out. The last of the alien sharpshooters lay dead or dying. Vega nodded grimly. Good work. Now let's finish securing this rust bucket. Back on the Indomitable, Admiral Taggart received an urgent transmission. A Ventaxian cruiser was broadcasting on all frequencies, its captain pleading for mercy. We surrender, the alien's translated voice crackled. Please, we only followed orders. Taggart's face hardened. He opened a channel to Earth Command. What's our protocol for prisoners? The debate that followed was heated. Some voices called for harsh retribution, while others urged caution and diplomacy. In the end, a compromise was reached. Confiscate their weapons and tech, Taggart ordered his boarding teams. But treat the prisoners humanely. We're better than them. As the last pockets of resistance were mopped up, human recovery crews began exploring the abandoned Ventaxian vessels. What they found chilled them to the bone. Lieutenant Amelia Foster led her team through the derelict corridors of a massive alien carrier. The ship's life support had failed, leaving a tomb of freeze-dried corpses. In the command center, they found evidence of a brutal mutiny. Alien bodies riddled with plasma burns. Consoles smashed in rage or desperation. My God, Foster whispered, surveying the carnage. What happened here? Her second-in-command shook his head. Looks like they tore each other apart when they realized it was over. Foster's calm crackled. All teams, this is command. Be advised, 
Full quarantine protocols are now in effect. Unknown biocontaminants detected in multiple vessels. Proceed with extreme caution. As Foster's team donned their hazard gear, she couldn't shake the feeling that they'd opened Pandora's box. The Ventaxian threat might be neutralized, but humanity's troubles were not nearly finished. In a secure lab deep beneath the lunar surface, Dr. Samantha Cross pored over data stolen from the Ventaxian flagship. Her eyes widened as she decrypted a star chart showing the full extent of the alien empire. This can't be right, she muttered, rechecking her calculations. The invasion force we defeated, it was just the tip of the iceberg. Cross turned to her team, her face grave. Get me a secure line to Earth Command. They need to see this now. As she waited for the connection, Cross stared at the vast swath of alien-controlled space displayed on her monitors. They'd won an incredible victory today, but she feared it had only stirred up a hornet's nest. The real war, she realized with a chill, might be just beginning. Dr. Cross's urgent message rippled through Earth Command like a shockwave. Admiral Taggart stood before the hastily assembled council, his face grim as he relayed the news. The Ventaxian Empire spans a significant portion of the galaxy, he explained, gesturing to the holographic star map. What we defeated was merely a scouting force. General Lucas Briggs leaned forward, his eyes narrowing. Then we finish the job. Hit them before they can regroup. Dr. Andrew Bennett shook his head vehemently. We can't risk further aggression. This is an opportunity for diplomacy, to prevent more bloodshed. Diplomacy? Briggs scoffed with the aliens who tried to annihilate us? Taggart raised a hand, silencing the brewing argument. We need a multi-pronged approach. Dr. Cross is already working to adapt Ventaxian tech to our ships. In the meantime, we need to secure our prisoners and gather intel. The debate raged for hours. In the end, Briggs' hardline stance won out. He was given authority over the hastily constructed lunar detention facility, despite Bennett's impassioned protests. On the moon's desolate surface, Ventaxian prisoners huddled in cramped, prefabricated cells. General Briggs strode through the facility, his boots leaving imprints in the lunar dust. Rations are to be kept to the bare minimum, he instructed the guards. No comforts, no concessions. We need them weak and compliant. Days passed. Tensions in the facility grew along with the aliens' desperation. It came to a head when a Ventaxian driven mad by thirst, lashed out at a guard. The response was swift and brutal. Alarms blared as prisoners overturned tables and hurled makeshift weapons. Briggs watched from the control room, his fists tight. Use whatever force necessary, he ordered. When the dust settled, dozens of Ventaxian bodies littered the floor. Briggs surveyed the carnage, unmoved. Clean this up, he commanded, and tighten security. We can't afford another incident. Meanwhile, in her subterranean lab, Dr. Cross worked feverishly. Holographic displays flickered with equations and schematics as she interfaced human and Ventaxian systems. The key is harnessing artificial singularities, she explained to her team. If we can focus that energy, we can create warp pulses capable of crossing vast distances. Her breakthrough came in the early hours of the morning. The hybrid engine hummed to life a swirling vortex of energy contained within its core. We've done it, Cross breathed, her eyes wide with a mixture of awe and trepidation. As Earth's defenses expanded, a shadow fell over the newfound hope. Jacob Brook, leader of a xenophobic militant group, broadcast chilling footage across the globe. Ventaxian prisoners, including the scientist Trava, writhed in agony as Brook's followers subjected them to horrific tortures. This is justice, Brooke raved, his eyes gleaming with fervor. This is what these monsters deserve. The images sent shockwaves through the population. Some cheered, others recoiled in disgust. World leaders scrambled to condemn the acts, even as anti-alien sentiment surged. Admiral Taggart stood on the bridge of the ESS Defiant, Earth's first warp pulse-equipped vessel. Stars blurred around them as they pushed deeper into space establishing outposts and early warning systems. Recon Squadron report, Taggart commanded. Sir, we've detected massive energy signatures in Ventaxian space, the sensor officer replied. It's, it's unlike anything we've ever seen. 
Taggart's grip tightened on the railing. The data scrolling across his display confirmed his worst fears. Millions of Ventaxian warships were mobilizing, a vast armada that dwarfed the invasion force they'd defeated. Send word to Earth, Taggart ordered, his voice steady despite the weight of the moment. Tell them to prepare. The real war is coming. Admiral Taggart's grim announcement echoed through the war room. The massive holographic display showed an overwhelming sea of red, each point representing a Ventaxian warship. We're looking at millions of vessels, Taggart said, his voice steady despite the weight of his words. This armada dwarfs anything we've encountered before. Dr. Samantha Cross stepped forward, her eyes locked on the swirling mass of enemy ships. Our warp pulse technology gives us an edge in mobility, but we're still hopelessly outnumbered. General Briggs smacked his fist on the table. Then we hit them harder. We have the superior tech. It won't be enough, Cross cut him off. She took a deep breath. I have a proposal. It's radical, but it might be our only chance. The room fell silent as Cross outlined her plan. Automated factories churning out millions of drone ships. A vast network of artificial intelligences to control them. The entire industrial might of Earth turned towards a single purpose. You want to build a robotic army? President Chen asked, her brow furrowed. Cross nodded. A ghost fleet. Expendable, adaptable, and capable of tactics no human mind could conceive. Briggs bristled. Absolutely not. We can't trust our fate to a bunch of machines. The debate raged for hours. In the end, desperation won out over caution. Operation Ghost Fleet was greenlit. Weeks turned to months as the project consumed every resource Earth could muster. Entire continents were strip-mined. Factories ran day and night. Cross worked tirelessly, pushing the boundaries of AI development. Captain Sarah Chen stood on the bridge of the Relentless, watching as waves of skeletal drone ships emerged from orbital construction yards. The Ghost Fleet was taking shape, a vast armada of silicon and steel. I never thought I'd see anything like this, her exo murmured. Chen nodded, her eyes fixed on the swarm of drones. Let's hope it's enough. The peace was shattered by alarms blaring across the shipyard. Chen's tactical display lit up with multiple explosions. We're under attack, her weapons officer shouted. Internal sabotage. Chen's mind raced. Security teams to all critical areas. This has to be Brooks' people. As Chen coordinated the defense of the orbital facilities, events were unfolding planetside. Captain Jack Sullivan led his strike team through the winding tunnels of an abandoned missile silo. Intelligence had pinpointed this as Brooks' hideout. Movement ahead, Corporal Rodriguez whispered, his helmet sensors pinging. Sullivan raised a hand, signaling the team to halt. He activated his thermal imaging, revealing a cluster of heat signatures around the next bend. On my mark, Sullivan breathed. Three, two, one, go. The tunnel erupted in chaos. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air as Sullivan's team engaged Bruck's militants. The close quarters made for a brutal, desperate fight. Sullivan ducked under a wild swing, driving his combat knife into his attacker's side. He spun, firing his sidearm in one fluid motion. Two more militants fell. Brooke, Sullivan roared, catching sight of the extremist leader trying to flee deeper into the complex. The chase was short. Sullivan tackled Brooke, sending them both crashing to the ground. They grappled, trading vicious blows until Sullivan finally gained the upper hand. It's over, Sullivan panted, his weapon trained on Brooke's head. Brooke sneered. You think this changes anything? The aliens will... A stray shot from the ongoing firefight cut him off mid-sentence. Brooks slumped, lifeless. Sullivan cursed, turning the body over. His eyes widened as he saw the alien manufactured pistol in Brooks' hand. What the hell? Back in orbit, Admiral Taggart stood before the completed ghost fleet. Millions of drone ships hung silently in space, awaiting their orders. Dr. Cross approached, her face drawn with exhaustion and the weight of what was to come. The AIs are online and ready. We've done all we can. Taggart nodded. Then it's time. Deploy the ghost fleet. At cross command, the drones surged to life. They streamed out in an endless torrent, warp pulse engines flaring as they vanished into the void. Aboard the Indomitable, 
Taggart watched the main fleet prepare for their own jump. He opened a channel to all ships. This is Admiral Taggart. In a few moments, we'll be making our final push into the heart of Ventaxian space. The Ghost Fleet is clearing the way, but make no mistake, this will be the fight of our lives. He paused, his gaze sweeping across the bridge. Whatever happens, know this. The fate of our entire species rests on what we do today. Good hunting and Godspeed. Taggart gave the order. Space twisted and warped as the human armada engaged their warp pulse drives. In a heartbeat, they vanished. Chaos erupted as they materialized deep in enemy territory. The Ventaxian home fleet reeled in shock, caught completely off guard by the humans' audacious move. All ships, weapons free, Taggart commanded. Hit them hard and fast. The battle erupted across hundreds of systems simultaneously. Human ships darted and weaved, their warp pulse engines allowing them to dance between the lumbering Ventaxian vessels. Through it all, the ghost fleet swarmed like locusts. Waves of drones crashed against Ventaxian battle lines, overwhelming them through sheer numbers and inhuman tactics. On the Indomitable's bridge, Dr. Cross worked furiously at her console. Deploying the virus AI now, she announced. Taggart watched in awe as thousands of Ventaxian ships suddenly turned on their allies, their systems hijacked by Cross's digital infiltrators. My God, Taggart breathed. It's working. The tide was turning, but as Taggart surveyed the chaos unfolding around them, he knew the war was far from won. The real test was just beginning. The Indomitable shuddered as another volley of Ventaxian fire slammed into its shields. Admiral Taggart gripped the command console, his eyes darting across tactical displays awash in red. Ghost Fleet units, focus fire on the lead dreadnought, he barked. We need to punch a hole in their formation. A sea of skeletal drones surged forward, their weapons blazing. The Ventaxian ships buckled under the onslaught, but more kept coming. Admiral, Dr. Cross's voice crackled over the comms. The virus AI has successfully hijacked another wave of enemy vessels. They're turning on their own fleet now. Taggart allowed himself a grim smile. Excellent work, Doctor. Keep it up. On the bridge of the ESS Relentless, Captain Sarah Chen watched in awe as the battle unfolded. Status report on Cree Lock and Avenda, she ordered. Her tactical officer responded crisply. Ground forces have secured beachheads on both worlds, Captain. Sullivan and Vega are leading the push toward key installations. Chen nodded. Divert squadrons Delta and Echo to provide air support. Those resource depots are critical. The view outside the Relentless's viewport was a maelstrom of fire and twisted metal. Human ships darted between lumbering Ventaxian cruisers, their superior mobility allowing them to dance through the enemy's defensive lines. Suddenly, alarms blared across the Indomitable's bridge. Three Ventaxian dreadnoughts on intercept course, the sensor officer shouted. They're powering up their main guns. Taggart's mind raced. All power to forward shields. Prepare to... His words were cut short as a violent explosion rocked the ship. Warning klaxons screamed as systems across the Indomitable went dark. Report, Taggart demanded, pulling himself up from the deck. His chief engineer's face was ashen. Sir, the experimental antimatter weapon. It detonated in the launch tubes. We've lost containment in engineering, and the hull integrity is critical. Taggart's blood ran cold. He keyed the ship-wide calm. All hands, abandon ship. This is not a drill. Get to the escape pods immediately. As crew members scrambled to evacuate, Taggart remained rooted to the bridge. He watched the tactical display, noting with grim satisfaction that the premature detonation had at least damaged the approaching dreadnoughts. Admiral! Dr. Cross's panicked voice cut through the chaos. What are you doing? You need to evacuate! Taggart's voice was calm. The ship's lost, Doctor. Someone needs to ensure as many of the crew get out as possible. The Indomitable lurched, caught in the gravitational pull of a nearby gas giant. Taggart gripped the command chair as the deck tilted beneath him. On the surfaces of Kreelok and Avenda, the ground assaults faltered as news of the Indomitable's dire situation spread. Captain Sullivan, his armor scorched and dented, ducked behind a fallen Ventaxian war machine. 
Vega, he shouted over the din of battle. We need to regroup. The Admiral. Sergeant Rico Vega's gruff voice cut him off. I heard. But we've got our own problems, sir. He gestured to the waves of Ventaxian reinforcements pouring over the horizon. Sullivan's expression resolute. He keyed his comm, opening a channel to their orbital support. This is Ground Team Alpha. We need immediate evac and redeployment to assist Admiral Taggart. There was a long pause before a response crackled through. Negative, Ground Team Alpha. New orders from Earth Command. General Briggs has assumed control. All units are to hold position and continue the assault. Sullivan exchanged a bewildered look with Vega. What the hell is going on up there? Back on Earth, the war room was in an uproar. General Briggs stood at the head of the table, his face a mask of persistence. The alien menace must be crushed here and now, he thundered. We cannot afford to show weakness. Dr. Andrew Bennett thumped his hand on the table. This is madness, Briggs. You're abandoning our own people. Briggs's eyes narrowed. Guards, escort Dr. Bennett to his quarters. He is relieved of duty. As Bennett was led away, protesting loudly, Briggs turned to the remaining staff. Initiate Protocol Omega. Lock down all Ventaxian detention centers. No communication in or out. In orbit around the embattled Ventaxian worlds, Dr. Cross worked feverishly. Her fingers flew across holographic interfaces as she attempted to override the Ghost Fleet's core programming. Come on, she muttered. Just a little more. The vast swarm of drones suddenly changed course, thousands of units breaking off from the main battle. They streaked toward the stricken Indomitable, forming a protective screen around the failing vessel. Cross allowed herself a moment of triumph before keying her calm. Admiral Taggart, hold on! We're coming for you! As escape pods and shuttles fled the doomed flagship, the three Ventaxian dreadnoughts loomed ever closer. Their weapons powered up, preparing to deliver the final blow. The Indomitable's hull groaned, stressed beyond its limits. On the bridge, Admiral Taggart stared out at the oncoming armada, his eyebrows furrowed in fierce dedication. Concentration. Suddenly, a flurry of activity erupted on his tactical display. Sir, his sensor officer shouted. Massive energy fluctuations detected across the Ventaxian fleet. Taggart's eyes widened as he watched thousands of enemy vessels abruptly change course, their weapons now trained on their former allies. Dr. Cross's voice crackled over the comm, breathless with excitement. We did it, Admiral. The virus AI's safeguards are down. We've hijacked their entire battle group. A glimmer of hope sparked in Taggart's chest. Well done, Doctor. Now get us the hell out of here. The swarm of newly allied ships formed a protective screen around the failing Indomitable. Escape pods and shuttles streamed from its ruptured hull, narrowly evading the incoming fire from the three looming Ventaxian dreadnoughts. On the surface of Kreelock, Captain Sullivan's comm unit buzzed with urgent updates. He ducked behind a chunk of alien debris, plasma bolts sizzling overhead. Ground Team Alpha, this is Orbital Command. New orders, immediate extraction and redeployment to assist Admiral Taggart. Repeat, immediate extraction. Sullivan exchanged a quick glance with Vega. Looks like someone up there grew a conscience. Let's move. They fought their way to the extraction point, rallying scattered human forces as they went. Sullivan's heart raced as their dropship punched through the atmosphere, racing towards the Indomitable's last known position. The bridge of the dying flagship groaned and buckled. Taggart stumbled as another explosion rocked the ship. Through the viewscreen, he watched the Ventaxian dreadnoughts power up their main guns for the killing blow. The door to the bridge hissed open. Sullivan burst in, his armor scorched and dented. Admiral, he shouted, we need to go now. Taggart shook his head. The ship is lost, Sullivan finished, grabbing Taggart's arm. But you're not, sir. Not today. They sprinted through collapsing corridors, dodging falling debris and electrical fires. Sullivan half-dragged the wounded admiral to a still-functioning teleporter pad. Cross! Sullivan barked into his comm. We need an emergency beam out. The pad hummed to life as missiles impacted all around them. In a shimmer of light, they vanished, just as the Indomitable erupted in a blinding antimatter explosion. 
Taggart materialized on the deck of Cross's command cruiser, his uniform singed and blood trickling from a gash on his forehead. Medical teams swarmed him immediately. Get him to cryo, Cross ordered, her eyes never leaving her console. We're not out of this yet. As Taggart slipped into unconsciousness, word of his rescue spread like wildfire through the human forces. Ships regrouped, fighters launched with renewed vigor. On Evenda, Sergeant Vega led the charge towards the planet's massive shipyards. For the Admiral, he roared, his voice carrying over the din of battle. Human troops surged forward, their spirits lifted by the knowledge that their leader had cheated death once again. In the heart of Ventaxian space, Supreme Overlord Kravosh seethed with fury. His multifaceted eyes glowed with malevolent energy as he surveyed the tactical holograms surrounding him. The humans persist, he hissed. Then we shall show them the true meaning of sacrifice. At his command, the drives of the Ventaxian capital world spun up to impossible speeds. The planet's crust began to crack and heave. Alarms blared across human ships as energy readings spiked off the charts. Cross's eyes widened in horror as she realized what was happening. All ships, emergency warp pulse, she screamed into the fleet-wide channel. Get clear of the system now. But it was too late. The Ventaxian homeworld detonated in a cataclysmic blast, the released energy igniting its sun. In a matter of moments, the star collapsed, birthing a ravenous black hole. Shockwaves of unimaginable power rippled outward. Gamma radiation seared through shields and hulls alike. Entire squadrons of human ships vanished in the cosmic maelstrom. In the medical bay of Cross's cruiser, the stasis pod containing Admiral Taggart shuddered violently. Warning lights flashed as life support systems fluctuated. Outside, the very fabric of space-time writhed and twisted. As the survivors regrouped, they faced a grim new reality. The heart of Ventaxian space had become a cosmic maw of untold destructive power. Dr. Cross stared at the swirling vortex on her viewscreen, her mind already racing with possibilities. She keyed her calm, hailing Earth Command. This is Dr. Cross, she said, her voice steady despite the chaos around her. I have a plan, but we're going to need every ship, every drone, and every ounce of courage humanity has left. As she outlined her audacious strategy, a battered Taggart stirred in his pod. The final battle for the fate of humanity and all alien species was about to begin. The black hole's ravenous maw slowly receded in the view screens as the battered human fleet limped away from the devastation. Dr. Cross's audacious plan had succeeded, but at a terrible cost. The Ventaxian Empire lay in ruins, its homeworld obliterated by their own daring plan. Admiral Taggart emerged from his stasis pod, groggy but alive. He surveyed the bridge of Cross's cruiser, taking in the grim faces of the crew. Status report, he croaked, his throat dry. Cross turned from her console, dark circles under her eyes. We've won, Admiral. The Ventaxians are defeated. Taggart's shoulders sagged with relief, but the weight of command quickly reasserted itself. Casualties? Heavy, Cross replied, her voice tight. We lost nearly a third of the fleet in the final push. Ground forces on Kreelok and Ovenda suffered significant losses as well. Taggart nodded, processing the information. And the Ventaxians? Cross's expression darkened. Their leadership is gone, along with their capital. Scattered remnants remain, but they're no longer a threat. As the fleet limped back to Earth, News of their victory spread like wildfire. Crowds gathered in cities across the planet, cheering and waving flags. Taggart and Cross found themselves thrust into the spotlight, hailed as the saviors of humanity. But beneath the celebrations, fractures were already forming. In a private meeting room at Earth Command, Dr. Andrew Bennett faced off against General Lucas Briggs. The air crackled with tension as they debated humanity's next steps. We have an opportunity here, Bennett argued, his voice passionate, to forge alliances, to lead by example. The Ventaxians are beaten, yes, but we can offer them a path to redemption. Briggs scoffed, his face twisted in a sneer. Redemption? They tried to exterminate us. We should be consolidating our power, not extending olive branches. 
Outside, the streets of New Washington buzzed with activity. Holographic news feeds displayed footage of the final battle, interspersed with shots of cheering crowds. But not all the gatherings were celebratory. In a dingy warehouse on the outskirts of the city, Alan Cray addressed a group of hard-faced men and women. The former lieutenant of Jacob Brook paced before a makeshift stage, his eyes gleaming with fervor. Humanity stands triumphant, he declared, but our leaders would squander this victory. They speak of peace, of cooperation. He spat the words like curses. I say we finish what we started. Purge the alien filth from our galaxy. The crowd roared its approval, their faces twisted with hate. Across the city, Captain Jake Sullivan led his team through the winding corridors of a high-security detention center. Rows of stasis pods lined the walls, each containing a captured Ventaxian. Sullivan paused before one pod, studying the alien within. Its multifaceted eyes were closed, its chitinous armor dulled by captivity. He felt a twinge of... something. Not quite sympathy, but a recognition of a sentient being. His comm unit crackled to life. Captain Sullivan, report to briefing room Alpha immediately. Sullivan sighed, casting one last glance at the Ventaxian before heading out. The future of these prisoners, and perhaps the galaxy itself, hung in the balance. As he made his way through the facility, Sullivan couldn't shake the feeling that this victory was just the beginning of a new, equally dangerous chapter in human history. The wounds of war were still fresh, and the path forward was far from clear. In the heart of the former Ventaxian Empire, a lone ship drifted among the debris of shattered worlds. Its sensors probed the cosmic carnage, gathering data on the aftermath of humanity's triumph. Aboard the vessel, the alien physicist Trava worked tirelessly, her many-limbed form hunched over complex instruments. She had survived the destruction of her civilization, and now she watched with growing concern as humanity grappled with its newfound power. Trava knew that the galaxy's eyes were upon Earth. The actions of these strange, violent, yet occasionally noble beings would shape the cosmic order for generations to come. She could only hope that wisdom would prevail over vengeance. As Trava's ship continued its silent vigil, the seeds of conflict were already taking root on Earth. The hard-won peace was about to face its greatest test yet. Admiral Taggart stood before the newly formed Galactic Council, his weathered face a mask of commitment. The chamber buzzed with tension as representatives from a dozen species debated the future of the shattered Ventaxian Empire. We must act swiftly, Taggart urged, his voice carrying across the room. A joint military governorship is our best hope for stability. The motion passed, but the admiral's victory felt hollow. As he left the chamber, his comm unit chirped urgently. Sir, we have a situation on Corbus 9, reported Captain Sullivan. Riots in the mining districts. Vega's marines are on site, but they're outnumbered. Taggart's eyes sharp. Deploy the fleet. Show of force should quell this before it spreads. But even as the words left his mouth, a sinking feeling settled in his gut. On Corby's 9, Sergeant Rico Vega ducked behind a makeshift barricade as plasma bolts sizzled overhead. His Marines were pinned down, caught between furious alien laborers and the remnants of a Ventaxian assault force. Command, we need air support, Vega shouted into his comm. They've got heavy weapons. The sky darkened as Council dropships descended, their weapons primed. For a moment, silence fell over the battlefield. Then all hell broke loose. In her laboratory aboard the repurposed Ventaxian station, Dr. Cross hunched over a sea of holographic displays. Her eyes, ringed with dark circles, darted between streams of data. We're close, she muttered, fingers flying across the control panel. Just a few more adjustments to the Ma's quantum matrix. An alarm blared, red lights bathing the lab in an ominous glow. Cross's eyes widened as she realized her mistake. On the Tyrune Emissary Station, diplomats scrambled for escape pods as reality itself began to unravel. Ambassador Zolak's tentacles trembled as he stared out the viewport, watching as ships vanished into a grotesque tear in space-time. By the first ones, he whispered, what have we done? Back on Earth, Dr. Bennett lay in his hospital bed, his once robust frame now frail and wasted. Admiral Taggart sat at his side, 
listening intently to his old friend's labored words. Promise me, John, Bennett wheezed, gripping Taggart's hand. Life above all else, despite the toll. Taggart nodded, his throat tight. As Bennett's eyes closed for the final time, the weight of that promise settled heavily on the Admiral's shoulders. In her lab, Dr. Cross's laughter echoed maniacally as she initiated the final sequence. Warnings flashed across her screens, but she paid them no heed. We will evolve, she cried, slamming her palm down on the activation panel. The universe screamed. Taggart staggered as the deck beneath his feet shuddered violently. Klaxons wailed throughout the ship as reports flooded in from across the galaxy. Sir, his exo shouted, massive spatial distortions detected. Entire systems are... they're just gone. Taggart's mind raced, Bennett's contingencies, the evacuation protocols. It was their only hope. All hands, he barked into the fleet-wide comm. Initiate Operation Exodus. Get those civilian transports to the sanctuary worlds now. As oblivion consumed all in its path, Captain Sullivan led the rearguard action. His ships formed a desperate blockade, buying precious seconds for the refugees fleeing toward the galactic rim. Hold the line, Sullivan roared, his vessel shuddering under the onslaught of maw-spawned horrors. For Earth, for all life. In the chaos of battle, Vega and his platoon found themselves fighting alongside their former enemies. The grizzled sergeant exchanged a nod with a Ventaxian warrior as they charged toward the encroaching wave of nothingness. On his failing bridge, Admiral Taggart watched as the last refugee ships limped toward salvation. His finger hovered over the control that would seal their fate, and his own. Omega Protocol, he whispered, closing his eyes as he gave the final command. The cosmic anchor bombs detonated, freezing the sanctuary worlds in an eternal moment. As Oblivion claimed him, Taggart's last thought was of those final ships, carrying the last remnants of a thousand civilizations into an uncertain future. The Maw's hunger grew, consuming stars and planets alike. But in those isolated pockets of frozen time, a spark of hope remained. The cosmic struggle between existence and Oblivion had only just begun. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.